Now, as I mentioned previously, we are moving from Final Cut Pro Studio to Final Cut Pro or Premiere Pro. What this means is there's a few applications that have been lost from the studio set. And I'm going to go and over each one of these and talk about what the possible options are for replacement. The first one is Cinema Tools. Now, this is an application that allows you to go from film to video and then video back to actually physically cutting a film. This is something that I'm almost positive that not a single student here at PNCA used. And with everything going towards digital cinema, I don't think it's going to be missed at all. Next up is color, which is a grading suite. It allows you to color correct your footage and also put in a overall look or color to your production. This was something that was acquired by Apple in the Final Cut Pro Studio 2 that we have and it was refined further in Final Cut Pro Studio 3. All of the main features of this have been rolled into Final Cut Pro X or Final Cut Pro 10 and Adobe has come out with a new application that's available in the production bundle which is called SpeedGrade which allows you to do that type of thing. This is something that really wasn't used that often by our students but I think both applications have a solution for that. Next up is Motion which is a, Apple's kind of answer to After Effects. It's something that never really took hold in any of our classes and really hasn't taken hold in the industry. The one thing that I really used it for when I was teaching classes was the use of green screen and the superior slow motion. Both of those features have been integrated into Final Cut Pro 10 and in Premiere Pro they are integrated into either After Effects or Premiere itself. Compressor is something that is used to compress the video down for output. This is something that I think caused a lot of problems for students previously. I always see them very confused by it. A lot of the features of this have been rolled into Final Cut Pro 10. Adobe Premiere Pro has something called the Adobe Media Encoder that does a very similar job to this. Both Motion and Compressor have $50 options that are available in the App Store if there is any need for those. One of the other things the compressor was used for was to prepare stuff for DVD Studio Pro. That was only in the version 1 and the version that we have I think is version 4 or 5. But it's something that I think some people still think you need to use to get into DVD Studio Pro. This is something else that is leaving us. Now there are a few different options for this depending on if we go with Final Cut Pro 10 or if we go with Premiere Pro CS6. Let's look at the option for Final Cut Pro 10 first. Now we can always use iDVD which is very good at being able to export things out for looping and for autoplaying. It's something that actually I see most students use. The one thing that we're losing with Premiere Pro Studio that iDVD can't do is the ability to make better DVDs for portfolios etc. Final Cut Pro 10 also has the ability to make a very simple DVD from directly within the application. It can support autoplay, but currently, as far as I can tell, it does not support looping, which is kind of a detriment. I imagine that this is something that will be added in the near future. Part of the Adobe Premiere production bundle would be the Adobe Encore application, and this is something that gives us a lot more flexibility and control over our video than iDVD does. So this is a very similar product to and a very simple replacement to DVD Studio Pro. This also allows you to burn Blu-ray discs and Final Cut Pro 10 also allows you to burn Blu-ray discs as well. We do need an external Blu-ray burner as no Macintosh computer supports Blu-ray burning internally. So what's the verdict? I actually believe that both of these options are pretty good. If we really, really want to make nice portfolio DVDs, then I believe that Adobe Encore has the edge. But if we look at the way things are going, everything's going towards digital editing and then digital delivery. I was just watching a interview with Walter Murch, who is a really well-known editor, and he believes that this is the way things are going as well. More and more movie productions are using digital projectors to pro project out and deliver their film footage. So I believe that the disc media is something that in a few years is not even going to be around or applicable.
Next up, and I think one of our biggest losses, is going to be Soundtrack Pro. Soundtrack Pro was used in Beginning Video and Sound as a step up from GarageBand. Its replacement will be used in the new Beginning Sound class. Now here are the options we have. For Final Cut Pro 10, we have the option of also purchasing Logic Pro. This is a professional music creation suite. Most music that you've heard on the radio that was made within the past four or five years was probably done on Logic Pro. It's the professional industry standard, and as you can see, the interface is very, very similar to the old Soundtrack Pro. On Adobe's side, we have Adobe Audition. Audition is also a very comparable player, and as you can see, it's very, very similar in the way that it looks to Logic Pro. In my research, it's something that people use because it's around, but it's not really an industry standard. It's just a nice addition. The overall verdict for me would be cost being no option, Logic Pro. The interface is a little bit more refined and it is the industry standard. It also gives a little bit more flexibility in the creation of music and soundscapes, which is something that it looks like the sound program of the video and sound is going more towards. Now another question you might be asking yourself is what about the old Final Cut Pro 6 and 7 projects? Well don't worry, Final Cut Pro 10 when it first came out there was a big big complaint that you couldn't upgrade your projects from Final Cut Pro 6 or 7. There is a small $10 application called X to 7 and 7 to X that allows you to go to both back and forth between the two. Adobe Premiere Pro actually supports the importing of Final Cut Pro 7's XML format, so it automatically can import the footage right off the bat. 